So this is the default setup for the first person shooter and it's on boards. And what we want to do is we want to get rid of those boards. So the first thing we need to do is to go into first person blueprints. And we need to open up the first person character and it looks something like this. So I, I've got the event class open and we can see that we have basically a, a bunch of events. And the events that we are most interested in is something called input action fire. You'll also notice there is an input touch. And we can see that what happens is, is that we get a montage play uh, and basically that's just a, an animation and then we get a spawn projectile and play a sound. Now we could just be destructive here and we could just get rid of um, the, the spawning projectile but what might be more useful as we have a spawning projectile is to modify it so that we can basically set a, an if statement up that says should we use the ball or should we use a bullet? So that's what I plan to do. And the first step is to actually make a variable. And, and let's have this called use bullet. And I'm going to make this uh, a visible, which means it's public variable, which means you can access it in the editor and if I just compile this and close this down and hit play and I go in and I select my first person player character and scroll down to default we now have a toggle that we can say use bullet it doesn't do anything at the moment we are using a ball. Um, but that's a non-destructive way of uh, basically editing the code. So let's open this up. So there are, um, first of all, there's a common action that we want to do irrespective of whether we're using a, a bullet or a ball. And, and that's the kind of the play sound. Um, so which sound we play would obviously depend on whether we what kind of action we're doing but just for simplicity um, I'm going to move the play sound so I'm going to take off this connector and plug it directly in and I'm going to trace back to this connector which is the touch input and plug that into play sound as well right and it's not place it's got, I've got the wrong one it's this one that one there there we go let's just undo that because I definitely dragged off the wrong one there from here to here right so I've effectively um, disconnected this node let me just select that so this is, doesn't get executed now, so we will not spawn a ball. We just go straight to playing the sound. And I'm going to move this around. And again, I'm going to alt click to get rid of that connector. Put that in there. So let's just compile and see what this does. And I go in and play. So hopefully you can hear that. Um, so it fires the gun, we still hear the sound, we still get the motion, um, but what we don't get is that the ball doesn't spawn. Okay, so in principle we've solved the problem, but the problem is a little bit more detailed than that, because obviously we still want it to be able to hit targets. Let's open this up again. Let's use our use bullet. Um, and I'm going to drag, drop it in, and go get to use bullet. And I'm going to if true. So we're going to go for a branch. So if this condition is true, 
um, we want to use the bullet. And if the condition is false, we want to spawn a projectile. And that is executed straight after the sound. And again, if we tidy this up a little bit. And I'm going to put that back in. Let's compile it. So let's play. So if I Alt Tab, I can get my mouse back and I can go and look at the first person character. I'm just going to lock this panel so it doesn't go anywhere. And by default, we have use bullet unticked. So we get the ball. And if I come back in and use bullets, so if I tick it so that we are going to use a bullet instead. Now we don't get the ball spawn. So in principle, that's solved the problem. However, um, we're literally not doing anything other than playing the sound and playing the animation. And what we actually want to happen is we still want, or we probably still want some kind of physical reaction. We still want the physics to work. So I need to do some extra bits and pieces after I've played the sound. Um, and the bits and pieces I basically need to do is I need to figure out where the player is looking, where the, where the gun sight actually is in terms of position in world space. And then I need to basically fire a virtual bullet um, through that scene, which in this instance we call a line trace. And then I need to deal with anything that that line trace might have collided with. So let's let's just open this up and type line trace to begin with. And I'm going to use a line trace line trace by channel. So a line trace is effectively going to draw a line in the game from a start position to an end position. Um, and the start position we could say is the actor's location and then we could just make an end position as being basically the actor's forward vector multiplied by some big number. Um, so let's just look at what that does to begin with. So uh, I'm going to start with get actor location. Now this won't be correct because this is the actual location of the actor, not their viewport. Um, and if we want to get the forward vector of the actor as well. So again, it's itself. And we want to take this, we want to add those two vectors together. But before we add them together, this is what we call a normalized vector. So the length of this vector is one, and that's not very far. That's like literally one centimeter in space. And we need to, this to be the length of the line trace. So I am going to multiply this by a float. And I'm going to set this to be, let's start with 5,000 centimeters, which should be a very long distance. And then we need to add these two vectors. So this gives us a start and end position line trace. And what I also want to be doing is doing something called um, a debug draw. And basically what this means is just display it on the screen. Um, and I'm going to start with persistent, just so that it stays. And if I hit play, uh, I need to make sure that my actor is using the bullets as well. Let's just stop this. I'm going to set my default to use bullets so I don't have to keep ticking it. Okay, let's go play. So. I 
I don't see any line traces. To figure out what's going on, what we need to do is play. Uh, we need to open up the first person character in the edits for blueprints. And we need to basically make sure that uh, we are doing the right code. And we're not. I plugged it in the wrong place. That's what I've done wrong. If, if it's true, we should be doing a line trace. That's, that was a silly error. There we go, let's break that. Okay, if it's true, if it's true, we are going to fire a bullet. And I want to put all of this called fire bullet. So you press, select some stuff, press C, and it will put a comment box around it. Comment box around it. I don't need that comment box. Okay, so I'm going to compile that again. Hit play. Okay, there we go. So that's our line trace. So it started where the player position was, and it ended forwards of that player position. And it will always go forwards. And you'll see that it stops when it hits one of these objects. This is very useful. So that's, a, that's effectively a virtual bullet in our scene. OK, so we have our virtual bullet. What we need to be doing is we need to be starting at the correct position. So first of all, in terms of the actor's location, this is where we want the virtual bullet to start from. And if we go and look at the viewport, we can see that there's two guns in the scene. One is the VR gun. And the other one is the first person gun. And you can even see that there are some markers on the end. There's a little sphere, and that sphere basically tells us where the gun is actually really pointing. Um, and you can see that the X ve ve vector is literally the barrel of the gun. It's where the gun is actually pointing. Um, so we could use this, and it will be interesting to see what happens when we do. So that's our sphere that's on the end of our FPS gun. And if we go to our event graph, let's drag in our sphere. And if we try and plug in actor location into the get actor location, you can see it's like it's not going to do it. It gives us a warning. And the reason it gives us a warning is because this expects an actor. And this isn't an actor, it's a component. Let's just go for get location because that's what we want. And we want the world location. And as you can see, these things are virtually the same. So it gives us a vector. Let's plug the vector in to our start and to our monkey pie by the end. And let's use the spheres um, forward vector. So we're going to get the forward vector. Again, we, we can't plug this in because it's not an actor and we're going to plug this into here so that's our forward vector so that's where the gun is located and where the gun is pointing let's compile that up and let's play and if i shoot um it definitely came out of where i was uh the right point of the gun but it didn't end up where I was aiming. Um, and again, if I go over to this box and I shoot, you can definitely see that that is where the gun is. Um, and this is kind of a weird thing because it's a bit about the false perspective and, and the fact that the gun is pointing off to one side. So if I was actually trying to shoot something, um, I would probably miss. Let's open up the Blueprint Editor. Um, it really is more about a question of which forward vector we should use. And rather than using the gun's forward vector, or more specifically this sphere, and trying to correct for where the sphere is and where it happens to be in space, and again, if you can look, you know, the fact that it's been held, it's kind of at a jaunty angle. It would be better to use this, the camera. So that's the 
that's the thing that we're actually looking down. That's the actual eyes that we've got. And this is the camera vector. So x is the forward vector. So we should just use this vector instead. So we've got the first person camera. I'm going to go to the event graph, I'm going to drag in my first person camera, and I'm going to plug that in. Let's compile, let's close it down, let's hit play. And you can see that we now have a much more accurate shot. Okay, so we have a trace. The next thing to do is we need to deal with what happens when we hit something. Um, and you can see that the output from this trace is an executable line, and also it has something called a out hit, which is a structure, which is a whole bag of information. And then we have a return value. Basically, it's a Boolean that says if there was a hit. Um, so I want something to happen after I've done my line trace. And I want to be looking at this uh, out hit. So I'm just going to drag this off and I'm going to go break. And I'm just going to open this up. And you can see that we have quite a lot of information in terms of the hit result. Um, so we have things like um, the location of where the hit impacted. We have what we hit in terms of the actor. And we also have what we hit in terms of maybe we hit a component within the actor. And all we really want to do is to know if whatever we hit is doing physics. And if it's doing some physics, uh, we then want to add an impulse to the to that object. Right, okay then. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find out whether it's doing any physics. So I'm going to get a hit component and I'm going to ask about sim physics. So, and I can ask the function, is simulating physics? And it says, uh, is this thing simulating any physics? And it gives us a return value, which is called Boolean. It's basically a yes or a no. Is it doing physics simulation? And if it's doing some physics simulation, I basically then want to um, add an impulse to that particular object. So um, we need to run this through a branch, which is usually an if. So if this thing is simulating physics there and it's true, then I need to do something called an impulse. And I want to add an impulse and use um, at a location. So we have a bunch of things that this could be and sometimes it's difficult to know well which one do I use um, and so instead of dragging off the executable what I could do is drag off the hit component and just go add impulse and you can see that it's restricted the list down to what is appropriate in terms of my selection. And I'm saying, if this is true, if the thing is simulating physics, then I want to add an impulse. And we, the impulse is the location. So where is the impulse? And I know the location because it's given. And then I want to look at the direction. So. Um, and basically, that's, that's what is the impulse force. Um, and part of that is going to be how much energy is in the actual projectile. Um, and part of that is going to be the direction of that. Um, so we can use things like uh, impact normal, normal uh, and impact normal as vectors. Um, 
or we could just look at things like the shoot direction. So in this case, we could be using uh, what is the forward vector. So let's start by using that forward vector. And it's a bit of a long reach, but there we are. So I want to do a multiply. And basically what I'm saying here is, is energy in, in the projectile. And you need quite a lot of energy in things like your weapon damage. D, five, one, two, three, four, five. That's how much energy is in this particular impact. Okay, so let's just plug this in so that it gets ex executed. So if we have a look at the execution, it's like, do the line trace, then we have a branch statement that says, is it simulating physics? If it is simulating physics, then give it a kick, effectively add an impulse. Let's compile that and see what happens. seems pretty effective. And so the last thing we might want to do is we might want to promote this to an actual variable because trying to find this value somewhere in the code could be potentially quite difficult. And if we want to reference that more than once, um, it, again, we, would, we might have problems if we had to go into our code and modify it two or three times over. So I'm just going to drag off of this and promote it to a variable. I'm going to call this bullet bullet damage. That will do me. Bullet energy. Uh, and as you can see, what I can do is make this a uh, public variable. I'm going to compile this. You'll see that because I dragged off a pin that already had a value, it's actually neatly put that value into the default value for me. So that's handy. Um, so let's hit play. Let's go into our first person character. And now you can see that we have our bullet damage. If I set this down to a tenth of the energy, um, we can go in and see that. It's doing very little in terms of um, movement. And if I go in it and sets this to quite a bit more energy, about three times the original. That's a lot more exciting. And then finally, what I will need to do is uh, I don't really want to see all of those line traces. So I'm going to go in to my line trace and I'm going to set this to none. And if we compile, play, 